How do I do a slide presentation with my picture in it, like this? Voila. Well, you need a webcam. So I looked at Elgato Foscam, and it was repeatedly disconnected. I really like this. I like the way it blurred backgrounds. You can add different backgrounds. There was a lot of adjustments. The camera image was great. It had great reviews. GoPro 11 and webcam app. There was a sound lag. I probably could have gotten it to work. I knew a lot less about how everything worked when I was trying that, but I gave up. Uh, it's not exactly a dedicated webcam. I wanted a dedicated webcam. The Logitech Brio was the next one, and when I moved my hand, it blurred dramatically, and so I packaged it and sent it back. Then the next up online was the Razer Keo Pro, and the software wasn't installing. The installation program wanted me to install many different programs that would control a lot of different things. They just wanted their hands all over in my computer and I wasn't having any part of that. So then the Insta360 link, it worked. It's great. It's what I'm talking to now. I can move my head and it will follow me. I can give it the signal and the blue light blinks and now it doesn't follow. It will follow you around the room. It's automatic focus, it's 4K, it's three times more expensive than all, almost all the rest. What worked flawlessly. I wish it had programs that blurred things automatically in the background. Maybe that can be accomplished with OBS. I haven't gotten into that that deep. The software, Camtasia, I was a subscriber. I paid $300. I bought the package of both Snagit and Camtasia, and I had a problem. And I was calling, trying to make contact, and I couldn't connect. I was not going to re-up with the $50 a year support. I went to OBS Studio. The awesome power, and it's open source, and there's lots published on it, and it's extremely flexible. And Road Connect is a necessary evil that works with my NTG. And why I say that is you have to check on it often. If you keep an eye on it, it does pretty good. Windows 11 Pro 22H2 is what I'm using. It has a mind of its own. I'll show you how that works. And Google Slides. I tried OpenOffice, LibreOffice. I considered Microsoft PowerPoint, but I didn't want to start going down the Office 365 path. So Google Slides has everything I need. It's free, and I love the autosave feature. I don't have to stop and occasionally save to make sure something doesn't blow up on me and then I'm left with nothing, which happened occasionally with the open source, open office, and Libre office. Premiere Pro and Audition, I use that to edit and post, and I edit all my ahs and ands. In Audition, there's a sound capture to isolate a part of the video where there's just the background noise, and you use that noise print to erase all the noise in the rest of the video. Hardware. Asus ZenBook Pro Duo i9 10980HK is the processor. It's 8 core. Windows reports there's 16 CPUs in it. It is a laptop, so I have a lot of things plugged into it, and that might have been explained some of the downfall of Elgato Foscam. I'm using Rode VideoMic NTG USB. And I have two 4K LG monitors, and each of them have two speakers in the bottom, which is what I use. I don't use headphones. I want to hear what you're most likely to hear. This is the Insta360 link. It has the artificial intelligence in 4K that I just talked about a second ago. So the settings, video mic NTG. I have the 150 hertz pass on only. Road Connect, Video Mic NTG, System Virtual Devices, Out, LG Monitors, Speakers.
Windows 11 permissions in out settings. We're going to cover all that right now. OBS sources audio mixer settings. We're going to cover all these things so I can show you how to set it up exactly. So these are the programs and how they work. I'm going to drag Rode Connect onto the screen here. When it's installed, this is what you will see. It automatically put video mic NTG here. There's a microphone output in the side of it. It's showing that. If I click on this, it'll show you settings. And these are actually buttons, but if I press this, it will change the button setting and the little light that's on top of the NTG. I had the gain. It came default set somewhere on 20, and so then I padded it. And what that does is it knocks it down 20 decibels. So when I set this to zero, I didn't need the pad anymore. The 150 hertz takes care of some of the unwanted sound, and I selected the noise gate compressor, RL exciter, and big bottom. I don't know exactly what they do, but they sound good to me. So we'll X out of there. The system of the sounds that are played when you play a game or play something from the internet, such as, let's get this, I'll play this clip here. Now it's picking, the microphone is picking up this as well as the system. So let's look at, here we are. So see, the system is playing. But there's some redundancy in here because the microphone is picking up what's in the speaker. So it might sound a little funny. I would have to mute the microphone, but then you wouldn't hear me. But anyway, this demonstrates the, how the system works. So we'll go back. If I were playing a game, it would be the same thing. So we'll stop this. Okay. This is the recordings. It shows the recordings. It won't turn on when I have it set up the way it is. Here's the mixer view, and this is the mixer, and there's sound effects. This is important here. This preferences the hamburger menu. And this channel assignment is where you would drag these things up here. So the virtual was down here and the system was down here and you just drag them up. This is the important thing here is preferences. I just set the monitor out to this LG 4K display. It has speakers in it. I don't want it to go through the microphones, but if you did, you would probably use this setting here and you would change this to something that works for you. This needs to get set up and occasionally when I'm not using Road Connect often, it will disconnect and sometimes set this to none. So you have to go in here occasionally and check. And when it's working, you'll see this meter working and this meter working here. So that's how you set that up. There's the output to this. It takes all the signals and puts it out to the speakers in this 4K monitor that you're actually looking at. So let's set this aside and let's look at the Windows settings. Let's drag them over. And you go see this, so this is settings, and you go into sound, and Road Connect puts two. The Road Connect for communications, Road Connect for audio. This is where you want the sound output. Although it outputs it to the Road Connect, then the Road Connect in turn routes it into the 4K. So this, if you click on this arrow here, you can see it says set as default for sound device is default for audio if you click this it's going to change it's going to not make it what it's for communications see i renamed it both of them just showed up as road connect and i tried to rename them 
to get them to do the thing that they said they were going to do, but I wasn't able to accomplish that. So here's the other one, Road Connect for Audio, and it says, is default for communications. And now if I ch click on this, it's going to change it to is default for communications, but it's not, it's audio. So I just stopped messing around with it. Windows changes it to whatever it wants. And I just make sure that I have one of these selected. And right now this one is selected. I imagine that if you select this one, it would work too. But anyway, Road Connect is the output for one of these or both. I set the volume to 100 on everything. Now here's the input. The system input is also Road Connect. Now I don't know about these other settings. I tried them. Some they were. Sometimes they didn't. But the system input, the input for Windows is Road Connect. You want it to go to Road Connect. Everything goes to Road Connect, and then it comes out of Road Connect. And this is also very important. I worked for hours figuring this out in privacy and security here. In scrolling down, you have to notice scroll down. It looks like it ends right here, but you scroll down and click on microphone. And you need the microphone needs to have access. And down here, you will see that OBS Studio is currently in use. It's using that. Settings needs to be on. So that's it about Windows. And you have to check up on it because sometimes when it reboots, something can change. Now, the last thing is OBS. And I have it over here running. And I'll pull it over and you'll see this tunnel effect. But just pay attention to this bottom part down here. So the sources, I didn't change the name of the scene. This is the scene. What we're doing is the scene. There's no other scenes. And in the sources, there's two. The video capture device, that's the 360 link. And I'll show, we could click on this and get the properties. And this window comes up. And this is where sometimes when I... I get up and I leave and it tries to track me and it doesn't figure out that I've left and come back. So I have to go and click on configure video. And then this window comes up and then I use camera control and I can adjust, adjust the pan and tilt until it sees me. And then I can give it the, the it now turned off. And it's not going to track me. And it's now back on. And it will track me. So I have to make sure that it's seeing me and tracking me. Or if that's what I want it to do. So that's the video capture device settings. And then the display capture that's this whole area here. It's capturing this display LG HDR 4K. That's what it's capturing. And the properties, there's not nothing to the properties except for capture the cursor. So that just stays. Now, in the audio mixer, right, you can come down here and click on plus and add an audio input capture, audio output capture, and I didn't need to do anything with that. I just, this automatically showed up. And what I had to do is turn off the desktop audio and turn off the video capture. So this is the 360 link and it's a stereo and it will capture the sound and you'll have them both captured unless you go in here and turn this off. 
and this is the desktop audio, it's the microphone that's on the laptop, and that it needs to be turned off as well. So you're left with this mic auxiliary. If we click on this, you can see down here where it says properties. Defy, <clears throat> the device is default, not any of these other things. I'm not saying that they won't work, but this is the default device is the selection to select here. Now you come here and also go down to advanced audio properties and you see this. And there is a lot to this if you don't open it all the way. So this is where I set the mic aux to 220 millisecond sync offset because when I did that, it, there was a lag in the sound. So I needed to either slow down one or speed up the other. You can enter negative and positive uh, settings in this. I watched some guy's YouTube. This is the number he used. And so I decided to use this. And all of these come checked off. I only checked this one. Okay, so that's it about the advanced audio properties. And the volume is set. Let's see, do I have it? I have it turned all the way down. You could turn it up and see what it would be if it were clicked on by moving this. It shows a little recording, but it's not active. So I just slid those all the way back. Now, in settings, in settings, there's nothing to do in general. Choose your theme. I just use the default. In stream, I'm not streaming. So I, I don't worry about that. In output, in recording, I just chose CPQ 14 and these settings here. Someone had settings like this. My output is 1920 by 1080, the scale and the output. So it doesn't need to be rescaled here. So that's everything about the output. The audio, I just left this the way it was. Now, audio here is mic auxiliary audio is set to default right here. Another important thing. That's the only other important thing there. Now, for video, I have my base Canvas resolution in 1920 by 1080 with uh, aspect ratio 16 to 9 and the output the same. And because I'm recording right now, I can't, this will, isn't going to do anything, but it'll show you other settings. I'm capturing this whole 4K screen and this says 1920 by 1080, but I'm fine with that. 4K is monstrous to encode in, in Adobe. I mean, it's, it's surely possible. It just takes 10 times longer, it seems like. I don't need 4K for this presentation. You can see everything you need to see and see it fast, and more people can see it if it's not 4K. I just don't need a tutorial in 4K. Advanced, that's how it names the files. There is one setting here, automatically remux to MP4. So I'm recording in the MKV file. So in case the recording stops, it's recorded up to when it stops. But if you do this in MP4, and there's a setting where you can do the output in just MP4, 
been your screwed for the whole video. But if it automatically remuxes it to MP4, let me show you what that looks like. You can see here where there's the MKV file and then the MP4. So it writes an MKV file and an MP4 file right after it. Okay, so that's it about the advanced settings. But with these settings, you can do what I propose to do is make a slide deck presentation. People retain 44% more information if they can read it along with your talking about it. So it's very effective if you want to get a point across. And this is my first attempt to using this presentation, my first attempt to publish something using OBS. Uh, as I said, I was using Camtasia. It was delightful when it was working. Please leave comments. See if you can get this to work for you. Um, there's other very fancy things you can do with the image in the top right-hand corner. Before we go, let me show you this. This is Google Slides. And this is this slide presentation that I'm doing right now. And you can see that this has a gold bar around it. And so I could look at any one of these and then go up here and click Slideshow. And it will start. Now, I, I don't have it, so this software will pop in. But every time I click the cursor, these pop in. I hit the escape. Let's see, there's one more, yeah. I click it again, and then it just keeps on going. So I hit escape, and it goes back. I can start from the very beginning by clicking on that. And this is a very intuitive program. I didn't do any studying or look up anything, and I figured out how to how to have these things appear. See, they just appear, appear, appear. And you can set a, any image that you have, you can set to your background. And you can put a picture background. It's super easy. Please leave comments if you found this helpful what else you're doing to find helpful when somebody else comes along and looks at this and you've probably found improvements or mistakes, please leave those in the comments and uh, like it if you did. Uh, appreciate your time.